Hi everyone, this is Paul Lang for the Stock Swish, and I'd like to do a quick little training video about return on investment and compared to return on risk, or sometimes called reward to risk. As the trading community becomes more and more overlapped with intraday traders, a lot of the terms we use are becoming a little ambiguous or outdated or difficult to understand. So I'm going to run through and take a look at these terms and how they apply to you, whether you're an investor or a trader. Defining the terms, return on investment, commonly known as ROI, the definition out of the book somewhere is the net profit divided by net assets. My simplified definition is simply the money you make on a position as a percentage of the money needed to execute that position. Let's take a look at typical investor thinking. The traditional investor would buy a thousand shares of a $20 stock for a total investment of $20,000. That is what is required in order to control or hold this stock, $20,000. It goes up $2 over the year, the profit is $2,000. That means that this investor may 10% for the year, which is a 10% of course ROI, return on investment. You can arrive at that number because the profit was 2000 divided by the amount needed, which is 20000 Or, of course, you could also simplify the math and simply say, well, it's a $20 stock that went up $2. And if you didn't change your position throughout the year, that would be a 10% profit as well. That's the return on the investment. In terms of the risk that this trader incurred, for most investors, risk, meaning how much money could you have lost on this, is a very fuzzy term because for many investors the risk is the whole amount. Many investors will never exit a position and even those that, de that define a risk position ahead of time, a certain amount that they may lose, may never actually honor that amount. So defining this trade in terms of what they made based on what they risk is often very difficult unless this trader has established or this investor has established a record of containing his or her losses to a certain number. If you were to execute the same transaction as an investor using margin, you could double your ROI or your return on investment either by shrinking the base amount by half or by doubling your profit. Here's how that works. If you buy a thousand shares of a $20 stock, you can do that with only $10,000 in the account because using margin to complete the transaction for the other $10,000. Most brokerages will offer you a two to one leverage amount so that you can hold positions overnight or as long as you want to, holding that two to one amount, meaning you only need half of the normal amount that you would to execute the transaction. It goes up $2 over the year, and you make 20% for that year this time because either you made $2,000 based on your 10,000 amount, or if you had the $20,000 same base account, you can now buy $40,000 worth of stock, make $4,000, and that gives you your 20% as well. What is a good return? Well, a rate of return, an ROI, we're generally talking about a passive investor, meaning somebody who is taking their money, parking it somewhere for a long period of time, and then seeing how much money is there at the end of that period of time. Currently, as I'm speaking, banks are offering zero as a round number, less than 1%. Bonds and stocks may vary depending upon the quote-unquote risk that you're willing to take. Now, risk, as I'm using it here, I'm not talking about a risk amount. There's two, there's several uses of the word risk when we trade or invest. I'm not talking about the risk amount or the amount that this person has decided to lose before they leave the investment. I'm talking about how risky the transaction is. In other words, if you go to put your money in bonds, there are some bonds that pay, pay a very small amount because they're insured by the U.S. government, because there's very little chance of losing any of your principal. There are some bonds, however, that pay substantially more because there is a chance that the smaller city or the foreign country could actually go belly up and not honor their debt obligations, and you could lose your money. So you can get a varied amount of rate of return depending upon the risk that you're willing to take in terms of the chance that you lose your entire investment. Notice I put cash in here as something that is an investment with a rate of return. Yes, cash can actually make or lose money. A lot of people don't look at it that way, but it is true. And in the future, if we get into a very high inflationary rate, leaving your money as cash could be one of the worst choices because it could lose value more than any other asset, possibly. That's what happens in high inflationary times. So the point being that 
you have to park your assets somewhere. You have to park your money somewhere. Leaving it as cash is a decision. And you can actually look at cash as having a rate of return if you use as your base your actual buying power. A little beyond where we needed to be for this, but I did want to point out that for long-term investors, wherever your money is, there is no absolute safe neutral spot. Trader thinking goes something like this. You buy a 1,000 shares of a $20 stock at an investment of two to $5,000. Now, how did I get two to $5,000? Well, we talked about as an investor, it's a $10,000 investment that's needed or $10,000 of capital to maintain that $20,000 position of stock at a minimum because you get a two to one leverage from the broker. As a day trader, you typically get four to one from that same type of broker. Four to one as long as you exit the position during the day because it's more risky for the broker to let somebody hold a position overnight because you could have a bigger move. So four to one is a typical leverage allotted to day traders, which means $5,000 is all that you would need to control $20,000 worth of stock. 2000 on the low end because there are things called proprietary trading firms that may give you as much as 10 to 1 leverage, some even higher. So if the stock goes up a dollar on that day, you make $1,000 on that day. And as a trader, perhaps you limited your risk to $300. Now, a trader is much more likely to have a real significant risk amount that is limited by a number he has preset because to violate that amount on intraday transactions, that risk amount can grow really big really quick. So we oftentimes will start using the risk amount as being one of the factors that we look at in determining a trader's profitability. That means that using the ROI number that we use for an investor, the return on investment, that this particular transaction would have made from 20 to 50%. How did I get that? Well, $1,000 profit, and you could have had as little as $2,000 capital needed to execute this transaction in a proprietary trading fund, which means you made 1000 out of 2000 a 50% return in one day by definition. It could have been in 30 minutes. That's an incredible number. But as we'll discuss in a minute, there are other important things to consider if you're going to even talk about ROI as a term for a day trader. It's not always meaningful as a trader because, number one, the base amount, the amount of money that's required, is what is often changing dramatically that's making a large ROI, not the amount you're making. In other words, if you make that $1,000, if you needed 20000 you made 5%. If you needed 10000 you made 10%. In a prop firm, if you needed 2000 you made 50%. It's not really changing what you made or your trading expertise. It's simply changing the base amount that you needed because of the leverage that you had. So right there, ROI become, becomes a very difficult term for traders to use. Also, some prop firms actually could require you to put up nothing initially, meaning that your return is infinite from the first dollar that you make. The second issue is that the I stands for investment in ROI, which typically means a passive and lower risk transaction. Now, by lower risk, I'm not talking about your risk amount. I'm talking about the chances of the entire trade or investment going belly up. No investor plans on losing their entire investment. So with trader thinking, we think more along these lines. You buy a thousand shares of a $20 stock for an investment of two to five thousand dollars. It goes up a dollar that day, you make a thousand dollars. You limited your risk to three hundred dollars. And we typically would say in analyzing the trade that you made 3.3 times what you risked or your return on risk was 3.3 to 1. Return on risk is just another way of stating reward to risk, which is a term that most traders are well aware of. By the way, most traders actually use the term backwards. A lot of times you hear somebody say, well, my risk to reward was 3.3. Well, they probably mean their reward to risk. We almost always say the term backwards. We know what we mean, though. But in this particular example, it's a 3.3 reward to risk, or you could call it a return on risk, although that's not as common of a term. The transaction may take all day or make 10, 10 minutes, but that's a phenomenal return, whatever way you look at it. You can go back and do this trade again and again as a trader. And also, if you're only using 10% or 20% of your capital, you could do 10 of these trades at the same time, theoretically, meaning that the rate of return, if you look at it as such, uh, on an annualized basis can be typically 
off the chart for what you can make as an intraday trader. But there, there's a reason for that, and that's because you can, as a trader, typically lose your entire risk amount. In other words, a winning trade wins whatever you win. One times your risk, or two times your risk, or three times your risk, but a losing trade loses 100% of your risk. So your overall profitability becomes greatly watered down. So while the winning trades look great, and you say, wow, triple your money in two hours, in one day, whatever it is, that's great, but the end trading results have to include those losses, which of course will water down that result, and that is exactly what determines the profitability of a trader. As a trader, we will typically look to a combination of the reward to risk that we make on average as well as our batting average. How often do you lose it all? Very simply, as a trader, there's a balance and a trade-off, if you will, between reward to risk and a batting average. In other words, it's fairly easy to have a very high batting average if you're willing to take a very low reward to risk. In other words, you get out whenever you have a small profit, you're going to have a very high batting average, although your profitability may not be all that great. And conversely, if you go for really big gains and you go for that big reward to risk number, you may achieve it, but it may be at the cost of having a lot more trades that stop out on you in order to achieve that big winning trade. I hope you've enjoyed this little talk about reward to risk, return on investment, return on risk, and it helps you understand the difference as we look at some of these trading terms. It may or may not help your actual trading, but a lot of these analysis methods are very critical to helping to improve your trading or investing. If you are hearing this in a timely manner, our next Golden Gap course is going to be a special event. It's a live trading event during the trading week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week to September 27th to 29th. It's a weekday class during market hours that will include live trading during the class. Hours from 9 to 5. If you'd like to sign up or have more questions about the Golden Gap course, you can contact the email at the bottom there. That's melissa at thestockswish.com. And if you have any questions about the content of this video, feel free to email me up at the top there, paul at thestockswish.com. And if you are interested in getting a trial to our trading room, you can email info at the stock swoosh. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is Paul Lang. There's another training video out there that talks about share sizing that may also be of interest to you. You can find it on YouTube if you found this one interesting.